trying to be shy. I don't know why, because they've got nothing to be shy about. Right? Yes. 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 Give them a big round of applause.
from the community, from the participants that have been here for the past two days, those who couldn't make it even have sent their congratulations and also their sincere thanks for this initiative and for having worked with a number of people, Mimi, and we know you've spent countless hours, time, money, all sorts of other things that we don't need to really mention, but you know, you've done it with love. Mm. It, it is from your heart, and you're a beautiful, inspiring leader and soul. So thank you, Mimi, and uh, I'd like to invite all of connected uh, from professional level, people that see great uh, opportunity in person, I was Dr. Mimi. I was sat in uh, the forum. So Dr. the first thing Dr. Mimi told me, she spotted me and she was um, having a conversation with me. She, invited, she said, I need you to come to my office in St. Alban. Um, because she asked me, what, what's your background? I said, my background is health promotion. And from on, on, now, from on then, uh, Dr. Mimi consulted me that would you like to be in a um, in woman inaugural, um, inaugural <coughs> African Women's Summit, a diaspora women's summit? So my first answer was yes. And then from now on, we took, took on board a lot of great initiative. The reason I'm tr trying to acknowledge Dr. Mimi, we have done a lot of consultation with um, the school and other uh, uh, like great people that are really um, change makers in terms of policy, but the inspiring thing that I would like to share is when I invited uh, Dr. Mimi to school to meet a principal, um, Dr. Mimi didn't know exactly, you know, like uh, my personal life, because I would like to keep my personal life away from my from professional life. So Dr. Mimi found out that myself, I didn't, uh, I didn't see my mom for decades, for one decade. She's, um, she, was, she felt emotional from there. And I know it's a, there, there are war, a war uh, split families. Like the, the conversation that I always have with mom is through the phone call. It does the justice for me. Um, when war was going on, she told me, don't come. She prevented me a many times getting a ticket, don't come. Your family are somewhere. But doc, doctor, uh, the reason I share this is so important because Dr. Mimi told me, why didn't you tell me all this time? Mm -hmm. She was emotional, like me sitting with principal and, thing, and um, sharing that story. The reason I say this, we need people that are really, um, really open-hearted, community-driven people like Dr. Mimi that can relate mm -hmm. with someone from personal level, but from a professional level. It's so important. It's so important. She's a really game-changer, um, a, a, a community uh, engagement person. She used to establish a, lot, a woman group. I, I had a lot of positive things from Dr. Mimi when I moved here. I've only been here for two years and some months. Um, please, if you are here, try and work collaboratively with Dr. Mimi. Take this initiative further. And myself, I hope to see, to see this initiative grow more than this. 
and I'm grateful that uh, people such as um, a uh, 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 mayor from, uh, you know, uh, Mar Mar uh, so, sorry, um, member of the federal government from Marconum came here today. So um, I just want to share that story. We are here as a community. We need to be a game changer, but we need to relate from people that we work collaboratively. We don't need to be divided by, uh, by, uh, um, by ideologies of, uh, of you know, self-hatred self and, you know, um, things that don't unite us. We need something that binds us together as a community. It's so important. I'd just like to share that. And I really appreciate it. Dr. Mimi is a person that I see uh, that can be a great leader who's in our community as a woman. Nola Multi Products, which is where they donated all of the fabric for our outfits. Then we have uh, Melton Secondary College for sponsoring their students to attend. Catholic Regional College as well for sponsoring their students to attend. Maribyrnong City Council, Melton City Council, Oz African TV, Africa Media Australia, Dr. Fred and his crew, all of whom have been recording the event. State Government of Victoria, Victorian Multicultural Commission, and of course, the African Union. So please give them all a round of applause. And now for the volunteers, and Yasmin Musa. Edelman Guinness. Edelman Guinness. David Cowan. Hi, David. And Araksan Musa. Na Amanda Botor, Esperance Bakulikira, Amanda, Jack Akon, our speaker, Miss Adriana Pico, <laughs> You go right at the very end, far away from me. <laughs> 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 So my name is Dr. Glory Gatori and I am a lecturer at Southern Cross University in Queensland. I was presenting a paper about race, uh, Africanness and uh, the intersectionalities that we face. So we learned a lot of things about you know, the challenges that African women face in Australia, how we can support each other, how to develop relationships with our allies and with the government and also with the youth. For me the most important part of the, uh, of the whole summit has been networking and seeing so many women of colour in one space, you know, often I'm the only person in the room and so seeing all these women of colour, you know, lending their voices, but I feel really inspired and I know I'm not alone in this conversation. Continue to do groundbreaking research on areas of African immigrants, our health, our challenges. But now to connect more with the people that I've met here so that I'm not doing it on my own. Because there's an African proverb that says, if you want to go quickly, go alone. But if you want to go far, go with other people. I represent the African Union Youth. Here in Australia, I got involved in a lot of different areas from construction, art, music. I thank all the women of the world for a lot of things we learned from 
the first words we speak, you know, we learn from a mother. So I believe there's a thin line between African discipline and what they call uh, child abuse. Sometimes a parent got to physically discipline you. Like in my case, if it wasn't because I got a bit of African discipline, I would be dead by now, like most of my friends. Because when we were young, we were in discipline and we never used to listen. So words alone could not change us. Words alone could not do anything to us. If it wasn't for my mother giving me a bit of African discipline, giving me a bit of that road, instead of spoiling the child, I would have been really one lost soul. So back again talking about health, you know, mothers, you gotta teach your children about their origins and things they should not eat from an early age. From different tribes, cultures and everything comes along different diets. People eat the wrong foods and they get sick in the worst world. You know, they start getting obese. They can't even handle their lifestyle. So keep it real with your culture, so long as you're doing something good for society. And by the way, I gotta remind you all, what I gotta tell everybody is Africa is a landmass, which is just a geographic location, not a race. So a lot of misconceptions have been brought about to confuse people in this society. An African born in Australia is just called an African still when it comes to the law, when they're doing the wrong thing, nobody wants to accept them. But when they're doing the right thing, maybe they could be accepted. Oh yeah, let's get back to reality now. It's where you at, not where you're from. So Africans here gotta unite in uh, making this place a better place for everybody. Make Australia even better than it was before Africans arrived here. That's my only word for everybody. Thank you. My name is Awatif Omar Ibrahim. I came from North Sudan. My background is called Nuba. Kush is that we have a history, long history story from Egyptian Cairo. So I came to Australia with the three kids, and after three years I divorced, and uh, I'm a single mom, and I live in Australia 14 years. So I struggle a lot when I came to Australia, so because the English barrier and how to communicate with the people who don't know them, this is a very bad and hard for us to connection or contact with the Australian people. And uh, we have a lot of stories for us we can tell. We are tired like a mother with the kids and arrest them and they take him to school, pick him up and drop him caring and and then when they get old or oldest, at teenagers, I struggle for a lot but I get help from my community. So that was why I'm here. We have a beautiful sage mothers and everyone we have a story. It's my son, I get the message when he came here, he got back, he's so proud towards the women, African women, this, this struggle and, and the doctors and engineers and that is very good to get it for this, that is very important for me. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so my name is Mao Gamal. Um, I volunteer with the Greater City of Zaninok and I'm from Sudan. I think this summit was needed to empower the women that need empowerment because um, in, in the African community, there's not, I've never heard of these women before but I didn't come to this summit. Um, these women have been through a lot and their journey tells you what they went through. Um, to hear these stories, um, it gives you hope, motivation, that you can do it, but if you do need help, that there are people out there to reach to. So I'm definitely, definitely gonna take what I've learned throughout these two days and just talk to the females out there. Just, just share these testimonies that I've heard today and hopefully that they can come along next year. Like feel what I'm feeling right now, it's just undescribable, it's amazing. I would just like it to involve more youth because I feel like you can get a lot, a lot of information out of these ladies. It will make you appreciate what you have right now and, and that you're very pr privileged to be here in Australia, to get the opportunities, to get the education, to have a place to sleep in. Um, thank you all and I appreciate all the work that you're doing and all the awareness that you are raising to the African woman or just everybody in general. Thank you so much. My grandmother taught me to respect women. And in order to respect someone fully, at a certain point you need to understand them. 
And something about this year, something about this community, something about the opportunity to work alongside such brilliant women um, just really kind of seemed to me like the moment in which I should um, follow this passion. So this summit I loved because it was the first time that I felt like I actually could understand and see the world from a different and completely unique perspective and an important one. And I think for me what I most took away was this idea that we are privileged to be black. We are privileged to be African. We are privileged to have African women in our lives. We are privileged to have all of these examples and role models that are able to nurture us and care for us in a way that is completely unique to our heritage and our culture. I can definitely say that I am a prouder African man. I am a better man, just in general, but also that I finally feel like I understand the struggles, the wins, the losses, the doubts, the worries, the discrimination, but also everything else that is positive about being an African woman, I finally have understood at least a small piece of that because we've had amazing speakers and if you were here, there's a good chance that you feel the same as I do. If you were not, um, please subscribe to our newsletter on our website. We will be able to send you further information and through our social channels we will be able to have an outreach to reach you so that perhaps you can come to the same conclusion that I did, that it is worthwhile getting to understand someone else. Thank you. So what makes me proud of being an African and black is that I get to experience different cultures from my brothers and sisters. Although we both look alike, we both have different experiences in life and different cultures to share. So I really enjoyed that and I'm so proud to be black and African. So yes, that's what makes me happy in life. Amanda here is my sister. And I'm also from Ghana and I'm a proud Ghana girl. So I have a background in public health. And when Dr. Mimi told us about this um, this summit, I thought it would be a good, a good opportunity to come and meet other African women and just share our stories and share ideas about you know, the things that are affecting us and how we can encourage each other and be the sources of the solutions for our own problems. Yes. What I've found is that it's important for the youth to have a voice somewhere where they can, they'll be able to communicate their problems in life, their problems in life as well as cultural um, challenges they have with their parents and living in a new environment. So yeah, I, it just made me really aware of um, the problems and people the same age as me face and so it has given me um, it has made me um, very it has motivated me to the point where I would like to make a change to help um, people my, the same age as me. So yes, that's what I have gotten from this. Yeah, so I've also learned a lot meeting different ladies from different countries and I've learned you know just to just to um, engage in conversations and just speak speak what is affecting you because I think that's what we don't necessarily do in our, our African communities. It's think it's we often talk about our successes, but our failures and the things that are bothering us, we tend to keep them inside and not really talk about them. So yesterday we had a good chat in a girls' group and we, we really talked our hearts out. And it is my hope that after this conference, we can continue that conversation. So my name is Josephine. Um, my background is in uh, mental health. Um, currently working in prisons. <coughs> what I'm trying to do is trying to basically reduce the risk of offending and trying to engage them in alternative behaviors rather than... The reason why, and I'm so ha happy and grateful for conferences like this because Despite what the media is saying, there are so many positive um, African people in the community that are doing so much, that are educated, um, that are having their own businesses, that are running organizations, that are active members in the community. So organizations like this kind of bring us all together. And, and obviously there were a lot of issues that were raised, that were raised uh, about you know, what can be done and people really willing to get in there, people networking. Um, so it was such a positive, um, experience. I feel inspired. I feel like I was being listened to, and I also need to to other people as well. And I think we need a lot more of these. Um, so we're hopefully like, in the future we'll have a lot more um, events like this and have a lot more younger people. And what I want to take um, from this back into my community. One of the
things that kept coming up was the intergenerational gap. Um, it's, been, it's something I've been thinking about because I have uh, obviously three young girls of my own, I have a son as well. As much as we have our cultural values and we don't want to let them go, but we do live in a society that uh, our kids are in a different kind of westernized culture. So it's obviously trying to find that balance uh, between our culture and the culture that we're in. Uh, and a lot of things that came up was trying to listen to your child, be friends with your child. Sometimes we have to have these difficult conversations which we wouldn't normally have. We have to talk about sex education, we have to talk about relationships, we have to talk about work, we have to talk about money. Something that in the African culture that we wouldn't really sit down and have that conversation with our children. But yes, we just have to face the reality that we need to have this conversation. Awesome. All right, thanks. My name is Rexon. Um, my parents originate from Djibouti and Ethiopia, which is East in East Africa, the whole. I felt that this um, conference is important because I've learned loads of things, a lot of things, loads of things. Um, I learned how to empower myself, how to what courage means, and how to develop myself into more ways that I didn't even know. So inner self, yeah. <laughs> What I plan to do is be more community based, from grassroots to grow, develop, and seamlessly make things grow and facilitate, change. facilitate community change. change and environmental government awareness. <laughs> Can I just say thank you, everyone, for you know making this summit such a wonderful experience. Um, thank you to Victoria University for supporting us so generously. Thank you to the Office for Women, Victorian Government. Your generous uh, grant has helped us to make this a reality. But importantly, the volunteers and the committee members that you know have donated their time so generously to make this such a reality. You know, the inaugural African Diaspora Women Summit was really a vision and now it is a reality and the recommendations that so many people have made is something that we are very keen to follow up on but the most important thing is you know the desire and the express need that they want this at least once every year at this level and you know the quality of presenters and presentations was something that people highly remarked on and um, women talked about their personal ex experiences and the change that it made in them and that only yesterday some of their children already noticed that they were treating them differently they were treating them more like their friends rather than just you know I'm your mother and you are my child do as I, you are told so for me if that is what this summit can do and also I'll just encourage people to look at the videos think about how you can be involved next year send through your name at info at african diaspora women summit .org .au, and we're going to take it from there you know we've got so many other projects and we're going to be doing different things in the course of the year we're not just going to wait until the end of the year we say okay we have something but no in between we're going to engage people we're going to bring people together just have a discussion join in whenever you can so thank you people very much thanks for having us thanks dr fred thanks to everybody who you know uh, yes, yes me who has generously donated her time over the last two days you know mehek sherry rose amanda robert um desiree tracy k the other amanda you know the list goes on and the committee as well i just want to say i'm very grateful thank you yeah, this is Dr. Fred. I've had an interesting two days. It's been a wonderful summit. When you have a summit, it's the top. How can you top the top? Well, we're looking forward to topping the top. You're the tops. You're the summit for women. You're the tops for African women.